module 7 on finite element method. In this module, we will briefly discuss our third discretization strategy, what we call finite element method, which is one of the most popular analysis tools developed in the second half of the last century. And it has changed the commercial design analysis completely in last few decades. This is one of the most exciting tools, is fairly involved compared to finite difference methods. And in fact, we need a full course to understand this method fully. But here, in this course, we are going to discuss this particular method very briefly. Keeping in view that there are certain schools of analysts which prefer finite element discretization for solving the flow problems. This is a module outline. We will have a brief introduction to the finite element method, the way it developed and different types of it. We will have a look at one particular type, weighted residual formulation based finite element method. And then we will have a brief look at the so-called variational formulation. We will look at what are finite element interpolation or shape functions and the numerical integration schemes which are used in finite element analysis. And towards the end, we will apply this finite element method to one example problem, that of heat conduction. Now, in the first lecture, we will have a brief introduction to finite element method. We will have a look at the background of the finite element and its developments and what are the attractive features which have made this method so important. We will have a brief look at finite element methodology and then we will have discuss weighted residual formulation. We will look at the general methodology of weighted residual formulation and uh, what are known as strong and weak forms and what are major types of schemes which we can obtain using weighted residual formulation. Finite element is just one of them. And then we would consider what we call Galerkin finite element formulation for Poisson problem to illustrate the application of weighted residual formulation in finite element analysis. Now, this finite element method, it originated from matrix methods in structural mechanics in early 1950s. And in fact, it was popularized initially by civil engineers. The most significant contribution came from the two sides of Atlantic, Professor Olgert Jinkwitz at Swansea and uh, Professor Tinsley Odin at Texas Austin. And they took the matrix methods to new heights of what we call the finite element methods. And its initial applications were focused on stress analysis using variational principles, because that is where the method originated in civil engineering applications on analysis of structural problems, where this analysis of stress is what is important. So, initial applications were entirely focused on stress analysis. Now, later on, this method was generalized based on weighted residual approach, and this approach has made the finite element extremely popular in a broad spectrum of computational physics, not just computational mechanics and we will see very shortly why is that so. And it had made application of finite element possible to a wide range of problems from continuum mechanics to electrodynamics to nuclear physics, because it gets rid of, of the restrictions imposed by the requirement of variational principles in one type of finite element formulation. So, this is the method of weighted residual, which we are going to have a detailed look today. And how does this method work? In fact, what we require here is in finite element formulation, as we would start off from the governing differential equation and we would transform it into an appropriate integral equation. And once it has been converted into an integral equation, either through the variational formulation, which is only possible for a limited class of problems, where we have got something like energy and we can look into variation of the energy minimization principle or we can use a more general approach of weighted residual formulation, which can be applied to any differential equation. And 
use this approach to convert our differential equation into an integral equation. We require the, this transformation simply because we would like to sum up, we would like to obtain this integral over the entire computational domain by summing up the integrals over the small, small finite elements which constitute of whose superset is our complete computational domain. What are the attractive features of this method? A finite element can accommodate any type of grid. We can have a structured grid, we can have unstructured grid, we can have finite elements of any shape and size, we can have triangular elements, we can have quadrilaterals, we can have curved quadrilateral elements and they are analogs in three dimensions. So, this is what makes this method extremely suitable for complex geometries and that is the reason why this met method became extremely popular in structural applications which involve arbitrarily complex structures. So, since geometries are complex in structural applications, this method can be easily applied there and it has become very, very popular. And to deal with complex geometries, wide class of unstructured grid generation techniques will have been developed both for 2D applications as well as for 3D problems. And uh, in the past four or five decades when the size of problems grew, we were not able to solve them on a single machine and what was required is to work on massively parallel computers. The requirement came for partitioning our problem domain into a small, small subdomain. So, in the case of unstructured finite element analysis, mesh partitioning techniques were developed. You can find many of them available freely for download. You can download it, put your complete mesh and they will partition you for the required number of parallel processes which are chosen. So, we have got a wide class of both grid generation uh, methods as well as mesh partitioning schemes which are now available for parallel implementation of finite element method. Now, these both of these category of uh, software, they are available in public domain that is freely available or they are available as commercial software. So, depending on your budget and availability, you can have any of them. And these are available on almost all conceivable platforms, be the Windows machine, Linux based machines, Macs or Unix based machines. Now, let us have a brief look at the overall finite element methodology. So, as I mentioned earlier, what we need to do first is to obtain an integral form of equation. So, we would employ either a variational formulation or a weighted residual formulation to transform the governing differential equation into an integral equation. And we would get what we call a global weak form. What is this weak form? We will have a detailed look a little later. So, the starting point of finite element formulation is this global weak form. We call it global because it applies over the entire domain. And then next, we will now break our global domain or discretize our domain by a mesh. That is to say, we would divide our problem domain into a set of non overlapping finite elements. And then, once we have got our mesh discretization, depending on the element type which we have chosen, whether they are triangular elements, quadrilateral elements and how many computational nodes we want to keep on each of those elements, we have to choose an appropriate set of interpolation or shape functions to approximate the unknown function in terms of the nodal values of the unknown for a given element. And that can be used in the weak form. So, we will apply the weak form of governing equation to each element, evaluate the required integrals analytically if possible, which will happen if your geometry is very simple and we are dealing with regular shape elements. Otherwise, we will follow numerical integration. So, if once we have done the integration analytically or numerically as the case might be, we will obtain what we call discrete equation for the unknown function values at the nodes of the element. So, for each element, we will get a set of equations for the unknown function at each of the computational node of the element. 
So, this is what we will call as element level equation. Next what we do in infinite element is assemble all elemental equations. So, we got a small matrix equation corresponding to each finite element. They would be assembled in the global discrete system. This global assembly process is very important and it will depend on the nodal connectivity from one element to another element. So, this assembly process will lead us to a discrete system of equations for all nodal unknowns. And once we have got this discrete system, we would apply the boundary conditions and solve the global system of algebraic equations to obtain the value of the variable at each node. So, these two steps are fairly similar to what we have already done. These steps are rather common to almost all discretization schemes, be they finite element, finite difference or finite volume schemes that form the global system of equations, apply boundary conditions and then solve the resulting system of equations. Once we have obtained the value of variable at each node, in the case of finite element, we have got the shape functions and in the terms of shape functions, we can obtain value of the variable at any point in an element. We can differentiate the variable to obtain the gradients. So, say for instance, if, if you are interested in finding out the strains in structural analysis or the strain rates in fluid analysis to get our stresses in post processing phase or if you are solving heat conduction problem, you want to find out what the heat fluxes are. So, we can differentiate let us say temperature, obtain the gradient of temperature in terms of the shape functions and the nodal values of the temperature and we could obtain the physical quantities of interest to us in the entire domain. So, that is in that cell is the finite element methodology is fairly very very similar to what we had in the case of finite difference or finite volume methods. Few steps were rather common in each case. Now, let us come to this most popular finite element methodology which we adopt which is known as weighted residual formulation. Now, as far as this weighted residual formulation is concerned, it predates finite elements. They were used long, long ago to solve what we call global level approximate solutions, but they have been popularized by the development of finite element method later on to generalize the finite elements to solve wide variety of problems. So, let us consider a, a generic problem. Okay. So, let, let the governing equation for a physical problem in a domain omega, omega could be a 2D or 3 dimensional domain and let us express it as L u is equal to 0, where u is our unknown function and L is an operator. Okay. So, L is the differential operator. For instance, if you are dealing with a heat steady state heat conduction equation, then this L would be our Laplace operator. And in addition to this uh, governing equation to de uh, define this problem fully, we would have associated boundary and initial conditions. Initial conditions would be required if you are dealing with time dependent problems. So, this is a problem which we want to solve. It is not possible for us to solve it analytically. We cannot get its closed form exit solutions. So, we want to solve it approximately. We want to obtain an approximation to our problem variable or our function u. Okay, so, now, let us seek an approximate solution of the form. The equations are a bit jumbled up. So, let us move on to our board. Weighted residual formulation. So, we had our governing equation. So, governing differential equation by governing equation here we mean the partial differential equation which governs us a certain conservation principle for a given problem. So, we had expressed it as L of u is equal to 0. Now, what we want to do is 
in the case of uh, we want to find out an approximate solution. So, let us try to construct an approximate solution for unknown function u of x as that is u x is our exact solution which we do not know. So, we want to approximate in terms of u tilde at x and this u tilde of x is given by this sum sigma i n i x u i, where our u i's or value of uh, function u at discrete locations x i that is we have used this simple symbol that u i is value of u at point x i. And uh, this n i's are these are known functions, known or prescribed functions. Okay. So, this is starting for the weighted residual formulation. Okay, so, next what we will do is, we will substitute the approximate solution in governing equation and that will lead us to a residual function, which we will denote by symbol r. And uh, to determine the nodal value u i, what we will do is, we will take the inner product of the residual with a prescribed weight function or what we call test function and we will set it to 0. So, this is what we would do in our finite element formulation. So, let us get back to our board. We will define residual function r as l u tilde u tilde is an approximate solution, it is not an exact solution. So, when we substitute it in our governing equation, this number it has 1, this 2, 3, this is 4. So, once we have substituted the approximate solution, we will get some residual, we will get some error. So, this is also called error function, but since error function got a different connotation in mathematics, we will use the term residual function. Now, how do we obtain a solution? The thinking would be that look, if u tilde were very close to our exact solution, then this value of r should be as small as possible. So, do that minimization, what we will do is say, to obtain this nodal values u i's, we would set the inner product, by inner product we mean here the integral inner product of r with a set of weight functions. zero that is we will multiply r with a weight function 
integrate it over a problem domain and set it to 0. And of course, we will have to choose as many number of weight functions, as many number of discrete values are there. So, I should go from 1 to 4 m. Now, I would just like to reiterate the terminology which we have used here. The function n i x, these we called the trial functions, shape functions or interpolation functions. So, these are three names, they are used interchangeably in computational mechanics. These weight functions or what we call w's that two widely used terms or names are weight function and other name which we use is test functions. So, now we can get hold of why we call this process as weighted residual. We had calculated the residual function r and then we had multiplied with a weight and integrated it over the domain and set it to 0. So, this particular statement which you have written r w i d omega integral over omega is equal to 0, this is our weighted residual statement and this is what is going to help us solve or help us obtain an approximate solution to our problem. And uh, there is specific reason behind this weighted residual formulation. What we say that if the weight functions w i, they belong to a complete set of functions. Now, this I would leave as uh, exercise to you, look into your maths book and find out what do we mean by a complete set of functions. That if w i belong to a complete set of functions, then the above statement uh, which we had that r into w i integrated over the domain is equal to 0. This implies that the residual r must be orthogonal to every member of this set of functions. To that is to say, the residual is orthogonal to each of the weight functions. And Therefore, we use a specific terminology, we will say that r converges to 0 in the mean, that is what this integral says that we have made our residual function to almost tend to 0 and there is specific theorems in mathematics which say that if r converges to 0 in the mean, then as a consequence q tilde that is our approximation to u which was expressed in terms of uh, n i x multiplied by u i's, their summation that converges to the exit solution u of the equation l u is equal to 0 in the mean. So, this was the basic guiding principle of weighted residual method that if r is made to converge to 0 by choosing a suitable set of weight functions, then we can make our approximate solution u tilde to converge to exit solution in the mean. Now, depending on the choice of weight functions, we can get a variety of uh, solution methods. Let us have a look at some of them. This one is what we call point collocation method, wherein our weight function is Dirac delta function and we will illustrate what does it mean. It leads to what we call finite difference method. Let us see if there is any connection between this choice of our weight function and the finite difference method which we have dealt with earlier. So, we are dealing still with our weighted residual methods. And the first choice which we have made in the case of point collocation method 
why this method is called point collocation that would become obvious now that we have chosen w i to be delta x x i. Okay. This delta is Dirac delta function and it has got a very beautiful property this Dirac delta function that it is non-zero only when x is equal to x i and elsewhere takes a 0 value. So, once we put it in our weighted residual statement, then this r times delta x x i d omega is equal to 0. This leads to r at x i to be 0. This is referred to the substitution property of the delta operator. Okay. So, the moment we have this integral anything which any function which we multiply by the delta op, Dirac delta function and integrate it over a given domain, the equivalent integral or the resulting integral is just the value of the function at the point x i and what was this r x i? or r at x i that was basically so operator l u tilde x i. So, effectively what we have done now is that we have just set at l u tilde x i is equal to 0 at a set of points that i is equal to 1 and so on n. So, we here our differential equation is satisfied at discrete points x i by approximate solution. And if you recall, that is what we did in the case of finite difference formulation. That is to say, we had chosen a set of grid points and at each point we said that look, we are going to set our differential equation to 0 and all the differential operators would be replaced by the corresponding finite difference approximations. So, that is why this point collocation method is, it is equivalent to this is equivalent to finite difference method. So, one feature of the weighted residual method should be obvious now that this represents a much more general class of methods compared to a finite volume finite difference or just finite element method. We can obtain a variety of methods based on our weighted residual formulation. The next one is what we call subdomain collocation, where in our weight functions w i would be what we call heavy side functions. And this leads to a method which is analogous to the finite volume method which we have learnt earlier. And before we proceed to have a little detailed look at our subdomain collocation, let us just have a look at another method. We will just give its name, this detailed discussion we will do later on. Galerkin method or Bobno Galerkin method, because this method was proposed by two gentlemen separately, they worked on and they obtained this particular method. The weight function is the same as the trial function. A trial functions n i's which we have used, if you use the same functions as our weight functions in a weighted residual formulation, the resulting method is referred to as Galerkin method or Bobno Galerkin method. Now, let us see how this subdomain collocation method gives us something similar to the finite volume method.
So, here for what we do, let us take a simple case of one dimensional domain to illustrate this problem. So, this methodology, so a problem domain, we can break it into small, small subdomains. Okay, that is what we did in finite volume method that we broke our big problem domain into small, small finite volume. So, these subdomains are basically similar to what were our finite volumes. And if we pick up one specific subdomain, let us call it this omega k, our weight function, which will let us say the kth weight function, this would be defined at this w k is equal to 1, if variable x lies in this subdomain omega k, it is 0 otherwise. So, now what will happen to our kth weighted residual statement? So, weighted residual statement with w is equal to w k choice so, integral over omega or w k, this is what we had set to 0. w k is 0 elsewhere except that it is equal to 1 in omega k. So, this is equal to omega k or d omega is equal to 0. Or in other words, if you substitute for r, this is equal to L u d omega is equal to 0 over omega k. So, this was something fairly similar to what we did in one way of finite volume analysis. We said we can obtain the integral equations for finite volume analysis in two ways. One is by using the integral form of conservation equation. If that is not available, what we said that we will take our differential equation, integrate it over the finite volume. That is what we are doing here. We are just integrating it over the finite volume and that will give us the desired integral equation. We will integrate it further by parts to get our surface and volume integrals in terms of the appropriate quantities. So, this tells us this subdomain method is analogous to FVM that is our finite volume method which we had already discussed in previous module. Seen three of these what is the next one? Now, this one terminology which is used for a set of methods is called petro galerican method and there could be wide variety of such methods. There is only one restriction here that the choice of weight functions could be anything other than our trial functions or interpolation functions. So, this is a contrast here with Galer Bubno galerican method. In Galerican method or what we call other name is Bubno Galerican method, we chose uh, weight functions to be the same as interpolation functions. Any choice other than that, that w is i is not equal to n i would theoretically lead to what we call Petro Galerican method. So, in that way, our point collocation method or subdomain collocation method, all of them, they would fall in this wide category of methods called Petro Galerican methods. And the next what we will discuss next, those are also theoretically fall into this category. Now, the next one is what we call boundary element method. And here, the choice of weight function is very explicit. It is chosen as the particular solution of adjoint PDE. And that converts our integral form of the weighted residual equation, which was over the entire domain 
into a boundary integral and that is the reason this method is referred to as boundary element method or boundary integral equation. So, now let us have bit detailed look at this method. So, we have weighted residual method and we are looking at a specific choice which leads us to what we call boundary element method. So, this was our equation was this L u is equal to 0, this was our PDE. L is a differential operator okay. and we will denote by the symbol L star at adjoint operator of L, this we are going to denote by the symbol L star. So, in this case, if our weight function is chosen to be the particular solution of the adjoint equation that is L star w plus delta x i x is equal to 0. So, our weight function is the solution of this equation. So, then our weighted residual statement which is a domain integral because we had this odd into w d omega is equal to 0, this gets converted to a boundary integral equation. equation which we can write it as C x i u x i plus integral over the domain boundary gamma. So, this was a problem domain omega gamma denotes its boundary and we will have a set of differential operators f u g w d gamma is equal to 0. Now, this operators f and g, so differential operators f and g would depend on operator L. Now, the beautiful feature about this method is that instead of dealing with the domain integral, we need to only evaluate or we need to work with what we call the boundary integrals. So, in 2D basic our problem would become equivalent to solving in 1D problem around a curve. If you are dealing with 3D problem, instead of handling 3 dimensional integrals, we need to only work with surface integrals, we need to generate or miss only on the boundary surface of the problem domain. So, that is why some people claim that boundary element method leads to a dimensionality reduction by 1. So, in some structural mechanics application this method is very, very attractive to use. If you want to, uh, if you are interested in further details of this method, you can look into appropriate books on boundary element method. There are many books, textbooks available now on boundary element method. 
There are certain limitations though that uh, this particular solution is available only for the case where L is a linear operator. If it is a non-linear operator, we cannot get its adjoint operator and its particular solution. In that case, we will have to work with what we call the particular solutions for linearized equation and we, in, we will not actually get a boundary integral equation. That equation will be in terms of boundary plus some domain terms. So, we will not look into further details on this method. Interested readers can pick up any book on boundary element to satisfy their curiosity. Now, there are two terms used, strong form and weak form. Now, why do we call them a strong form and why do we call them weak form? Let us have a detailed look at our board. Let us get back to our weighted residual statement. R w d omega is equal to 0 or if you substitute for uh, R in terms of the approximate solutions, what we get? L of u tilde w i d omega is equal to 0. So, this particular form of integral equation, this is referred to as strong form. Why we call it a strong form? Because there are continuity requirements. So, because of stringent continuity requirement, on shape functions n i, because re remember that we have our u star stands for sigma i n i x u i, u i are unknown coefficients so, and n i are the specified functions. So, that n i's should be as many times differentiable as the order of or operator L. So, that is these functions must be differentiable to the order of derivatives in operator So, for instance, if L were our Laplace operator, which involves second order derivative, okay, our shape functions would also be differentiable twice. So, that is a very strong requirement. So, that is the reason this particular form is called as strong form. And there are no such requirements of, on continuity of WI. In fact, we have already seen few examples. For instance, our uh, point co-location method, which shows a Dirac delta function. Okay. We, uh, in subdomain method, which shows uh, w i is equal to 1, it was not a continuous function at all. So, with a strong form, there are no continuity requirements whatsoever on the weight function. All the requirements are there on the interpolation functions only. In normal finite element analysis, we would like to ameliorate this situation a bit. That is to say, we would like to relax the continuity requirements on the shape functions. So, what we can do is for relaxing that continuity requirements that integrate our strong form by parts. So, let us 
term this equation as 1. So, integrate equation 1 by parts and that integration process will now lead to a different set of operators. Okay. So, maybe we get some surface integrals plus B u C w i d omega. Now, here a, b and c are operators of lower degree than operator L. Okay. So, now what we have seen here that the requirements on of function u tilde or that is to say the differentiability requirements or continuity requirements for the shape functions have been reduced to a lower level and there are some continuity requirements which have been transferred on to our weight function. Okay. So, since this integration by parts relaxes, so since it relaxes continuity requirements on shape functions, we call it the weak form and it is this weak form is what we use in our finite element formulation. Okay, so, that is what is there with the strong versus weak form that we will always integrate our strong form by parts and thereby we would reduce the differentiability requirements on our shape functions. So, due, due to reduced continuity requirement of trial functions, weak form is preferred in finite element method. Next let us take a Galerican approach that is we would come up with a finite element formulation based on Galerican weighted residual formulation for one specific equation that is our Poisson equation. So, we will have a brief look at the method. Let us say a Poisson equation is given by del square u minus p is equal to 0. Now, this Poisson equation could represent our steady state heat conduction equation with volumetric heat generation. This is also encountered in electrostatics and in CFD, we encounter this equation in solution of incompressible flow problems, where in we have to solve a Poisson equation for pressure. Okay. So, this small difference between Laplace and Poisson equation, in Laplace equation this function p does not exist. So, we will simply have del square u is equal to 0, that is when we call it as a Laplace equation and when we have got something similar to what we can call a source term, the equation is referred to as Poisson equation. Now, let us write this, this strong form weight residual statement, the integral over omega del square u tilde minus p w i d omega is equal to 0. So, this is our strong form of the weight residual statement. This is not what we are going to use for finite element analysis. So, what do we do? Let us perform integration by parts. So, here we have got the second order derivative when we, once we perform the integration by parts, we get the first term which we are going to get is a surface integral, a boundary integral q w i d omega. Now, this q is the gradient of u that is in fact, it is del u by del n. So, we have got del u by del n 
w i times d omega minus this domain integral of the functions u tilde comma k. Now, now this comma k that stands for the derivative with respect to x k. So, I think this notation we have already seen when we discussed our uh, tensor notations. So, that we have just used that notation to, for sake of simplicity. So, u tilde comma k that represents d u tilde say by d x k into w i comma k which is a derivative of w i with respect to x k plus p times w i d omega is equal to 0. And now next what we will do is we will introduce our finite element discretization and uh, perform or apply this weak form over each element to obtain the elemental equations. Collect all those elemental equations to obtain the global discrete algebraic system given by k x is equal to f. So now, let us have a brief a bit further look at uh, some of the things which we passed over in the slide. So, Galer can finite element formulation for Poisson equation. So, we started off with our strong form del square u tilde minus p d omega this was equal to 0 sorry multiplied by a weight function and we integrated it to get our weak form q times w i d gamma minus integral over omega u tilde comma k w i comma k plus p times w i d omega is equal to 0. So, so far we have just done the mathematical manipulations, we have been introduced our finite element discretization. Next what we will do is our this is a problem domain omega, this we would represent by a union of these small small subdomains or finite elements. So, our omega would be represented as a union of the element omega e. So, any specific let us say here this particular triangle one of this can be called or element omega e and this weak form which we have derived earlier now this we are going to apply to each element. So, apply the weak form to each element and we have to make use of few approximations that oh, for each element how our u tilde would be defined, this would be defined in terms of the interpolation functions which are exclusive or which will depend on choice of our element. Let us say we have got a 3 nodal element, so we will have the summation going from 1 to 3 n i x u i at e. summation over i and our weight function w i's they will be chosen to be the same as is elemental shape functions. So, with this choice substitute it in our global weak form and then after integration. So, apply the weak form for each element by substituting integrate for each choice of w i, we have to choose as many w i s as there are nodes in the element. So, we will essentially get let us say if you have got 3 noded triangular element, we will have a set of 3 equations, let us collect those 3 equations 
So, integrate for each choice of one i to get what we call elemental equation which we can write in matrix form as k e u e is equal to f e. In our next step, now how this elements of matrix k e are defined? So, k e i, so k e m n, this is given by integral over our element omega e n m comma k n of n comma k d omega and f e m this would be given by n m p d omega over this element. So, this was the equation for only one element. Now, we have got to collect the algebraic equations for all the elements and this why uh, and we have to collect all of them and perform a step what is called as global assembly. So, global assembly will give us the final system of equations k into x is equal to f, where x is our vector of unknowns u at each node and this global k i j this would be obtained or less k i j at each node. Taking care of uh, the nodal connectivities, we have to appropriately add the terms in the global matrix and similarly this global load vector would be given by sigma e at f, this is mth component. So, that is how we would obtain our global system of equations. Once we have got our global system of equations, we can solve the system to obtain our nodal solutions. So, this way we would uh, put a stop to our discussions on the Galerkin finite element method. We will come back to it again and we will do each step in considerable detail for the exam for one of the example problems which we are going to take up in our section on the applications to scalar transport problems. So, that will illustrate uh, the steps involved clearly. For the time being, I would like to refer you to few good books. Like one of the most definitive books on finite elements is the one written by Jinkwitz, who is supposed to be the grandfather of this finite element method. So, this, this book called the finite element method, its basis and fundamentals. It is basically a set of three books, which was originally written as one book in 1970s. It is now grown into a three set volume and this is the first volume of that set, the finite element method, its basis and fundamentals wherein you can get the complete description of finite elements, the basics of finite elements. There are two other volumes, one which is specific to structural applications and third one is specific to fluid applications. Similarly, this one book by J. N. Reddy on finite element method and even on this book on CFD by Chung, Computational Fluid Dynamics by Chung there is one part which is dedicated to application of finite elements to flow problems. So, we will stop here for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will take up variational methods and further description of shape functions and numerical integration.